if as you walk around the countryside you carefully look and keep an eye on the hedges you may have well already started to notice a reddening especially in the hawthorn buds the first signs of bud swelling has already started and it's evident here and i'll show you in a minute or two you may well even find the old leaf so green like this look at this it's unbelievable absolutely unbelievable it appears to be the only one but it won't be that long before all the leaves are out on these trees behind me here at Lionwood and they're green if not greener than this There, doesn't that look a promising picture? No, you're probably all thinking, but to me, this is this is one of those sort of aspects of nature or signs that you can look for along your hawthorn hedges, and it helps you to realise that winter isn't that long, dark, cold slog that you think it is. The signs of the incoming spring are already starting to appear by the end of January. You have to bear in mind though that it is still very early and that there's every likelihood that during either February or going on previous years, more likely March, there will be another cold spell. That cold spell in March has become a regular feature in recent years, but here in Nottinghamshire, we seem to be very well placed to thwart any cold weather, any real cold weather. That seems to be destined for elsewhere in the UK. Nottinghamshire gets away extremely lightly in terms of winters. At least it has done in the last five or six years or so. But this bud burst of hawthorn here on the edge of Lamwood is personally one of my most welcome signs. This mild weather keeps up, and it's not long before the first green of the leaves appears. But whenever you see hawthorn starting to show red buds like this, to me, it's a welcome sign that the early spring isn't that far away after all. Now, isn't I surprised this almost certainly is a Clarus Ferragana? Now, I say that, the county recorder will be screaming at me because Clarus Ferragana is the only one of two very similar or visually identical moths to have been recorded from the Landwood and Equin area. The other one is a Clarus Natana. Now, that one is a moth most likely to occur of the two species in the Sherwood Forest area. This one just turned up, just saw it fluttering to the side. I mean, thankfully, it landed on the hedge here. Hence, we're having a look at it now. It appeared to come out of the leaf litter that's accumulated on the grass strip. But this is a moth which hibernates as an adult, has does a Clarice natana. The two species can be trapped and attracted to light during the late autumn and in the early spring period. It's often under-recorded, almost certainly, in Nottinghamshire, due to the fact that many moth trappers aren't active until later in the spring. But it's a nice, attractive little moth. It takes on a number of forms. And most of the forms are based on this sort of general tawny brown background colour. Yeah, that's a nice little surprise. I never expected that at all. I don't care what anybody says. January has a totally different feel to December. I think it's probably one of those things that you have to be in tune with nature, so to speak. But probably not so much in tune, just 
have a greater awareness of your surroundings. I think people have lost that ability now to have that awareness of the surroundings. They tend not to notice nature at all. They go about their daily business from day to day, week to week and month to month and never really noticed what is happening around them. But a January day, it has an entirely different feel to that of December. I don't know what it is. It just does. It just has a... It has a new feel. I suppose it's psychological, knowing that we've gone through Christmas and all that. We've gone through the shortest day. We've gone past that and got that out of the way. That's the most marvellous thing the day after the shortest day and then once you've got Christmas and New Year out of the way you're pretty much plain sailing today is a beautiful day it's lovely and mild variable amounts of cloud there's not a breath of wind a few chinks of blue sky even starting to appear but it definitely has a different feel to that that you get on a similar kind of day pre-Christmas. It's not so much visually different. This could look, and probably does look identical to if I'd stood here a couple of weeks before Christmas. So if it's not visual, the difference, what is the difference? Well, if you have a listen, as you walk around your woodlands, you'll start and notice there's an increase in bird song, although not so much bird song, but bird calls. It's mostly from blue tits and great tits, but while I've been stood here, I've had calls of green woodpecker and also great spotted woodpecker. The birds are starting to prospect for new sites. Sites where they'll start nesting in a couple of months' time. There's a lot of preparation goes on in nature. More than what you might realise. But wherever you go, although most especially in woodland, you'll notice a difference and an increase in bird activity and song and call. I'm having a so far unsuccessful look for the eggs of the purple hair street butterfly. I found a couple along here last year. There is no sign whatsoever on any of these available buds at the lower part of the trees at all. They're quite easy to find. Normally, if you're looking on the shorter, stubbier growth, this looks, well, this particular tree looks as though it's had some flailing done to it at the, during the course of last year. But what I have noticed is that the bud size seems to be particularly small. The eggs are usually very easy to find, tucked right in amongst the buds at the end of a, a short, stubby shoot. These don't seem suitable at all to me. But it could be that purple air seek suffered here especially. The reason for that would be that this is a south facing bank and it would have caught the full strength of the sun's rays and it would have been probably one of the warmest spots in the Ekron area to be honest here at this bottom edge of the Landwood Annex. May well be that purple air streaks suffer during 2023 and might well take a year or two to get back to the numbers 
of the last few years when it seems to have done really well. Now, I've had some success with finding a purple hair streak egg and it's on here. If I twist this round and get this in such a way that you can see these buds here, between these buds you may well be able to make out a tiny spherical egg and that's the egg of the purple hair streak. They're beautifully sculptured when seen at higher magnification so I'll drop a photo in here and you'll be able to see just how beautiful they are. Absolutely fabulous things and they are spherical although this one might not look it but that's purely because of the angle that's been laid at. Laid in the typical situation directly between two or three buds Normally, buds are a lot larger, twice the size than here. They're the more favourable buds to look in between, but the lack of those on any of these oaks here at Lownwood means that this female that laid this egg has probably had little choice in the matter as to where she lays her egg, but they do come down to lower levels. Although the adults spend much of their time at the tops of trees, females come down to lower levels and will lay their eggs within easy reach. This is one of those little things that you can do during the winter months brings you or increases the length of your recording season how many butterflies who record during the summer months have actually gone out and actually looked for these things it can be something of a formidable task and it can take a bit of patience but you will undoubtedly find them it's well worth the effort Great things to record and say a few people are bothering to look for the eggs during the winter months of both this and the white letter hair street. So I'm pleased with that. Didn't think we was going to get one. That's virtually the last bit of oak that I'm going to walk past on the way back to the car. That's not the best of views, is it? I'll swap it for this. Well, I've promised you a nice view. i probably stood in front of it, so you could probably hardly see anything now of the view, but that's looking over towards Kersall and Winkburn. Winkburn's great if you like mistletoe. It's absolutely full of it, trees around there. But it's nice to have found Egg of the Purple Air Seat. I didn't think it would. It's nice to see the Eclaris at the beginning of this clip, but... The main purpose of me coming out here is to look at the greenery here, how green it is. In the 70s and 80s, if it wouldn't have been green, you'd have seen very little green. The thing is, grass now grows pretty much 12 months of the year. It slows down, of course, during the winter months, but it still grows nonetheless. And the fields? There was no such thing as winter wheat going back in the 60s and 70s, so fields would have been brown. They would have been cultivated and left, and sowing would have commenced in the spring. But times have changed. And no doubt, in another 30, 40 years, it would have changed even more. 